Holy fucking shit. Holy shit. All I am going to say before this video actually starts is hashtag please sign Cedric. Let's talk about it. You know, I've sat here, to be completely honest with you, and I've done take after take after take of this review. Or I at least tried to. And if you are a podcaster and you talk about WWE and you come on here and do video reviews about what we've seen, whether it's Monday Night Raw, SmackDown, the Cruiserweight Classic, NXT, TNA, Ring of Honor, whatever wrestling promotion, organization, show that you like, and then you come on here and talk about it to your fan base, your subscribers, your listeners, it's nights like tonight that are humanly impossible to even talk about. It's like a double-edged sword. Everybody that watched tonight knows exactly what they seen. Everybody that watched tonight that come on here and do the YouTube review and the podcast review, there's no fucking way you can talk about what you've seen tonight at all. At all. We were treated to Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa last week, and we all thought that was the best match of the tournament. They brought the fucking house down at Full Sail University in week number four of the Cruiserweight Classic. And everybody was talking about that all week. All week. Leading up to their hashtag glorious bomb with Bobby Roode's theme music that pretty much went viral all over Twitter and in the WWE. And then we get treated to what Kota Ibushi and Cedric Alexander did tonight in week number five at the start of round two for the Cruiserweight Classic. There's no fucking way you can talk about what we've seen tonight at all. At all. All I'm going to say is this. If you missed it, if you were out hanging out with your girlfriend, if you were out working, getting home late, whatever the reason might be that you missed tonight's show, I am telling you this from a wrestling fan to a wrestling fan. I want you guys to give yourself a half an hour to watch what these two guys did. You will not regret it and you will come on my channel you, you're going to come to my podcast, and you're going to fucking thank me in the end. Because what we've seen tonight may very well end up being the best match in WWE, probably all of wrestling, period, in 2016. There's no way anybody can talk about this. All you have to do is plant yourself in front of a television with the WWE Network and watch these two guys do what they do better than anybody on the face of the fucking planet. We all thought what we seen last week was the best match of this tournament. What we seen tonight very well may be the best match in all of wrestling at the end of the year. I have never, and I'm not going to sit here and lie to you. I, I, I've been floored by matches before, but it hasn't been like tonight in a very, very long time. I can't even remember the last time I was honestly and genuinely floored by what two men did in the ring for the chance at winning this tournament and the eventual cruiserweight title of the WWE. There was one sequence in this match tonight with Cedric Alexander and Cody Ibushi where they went nearly the time limit. And it was drawing down to at least five minutes left. And WWE let these guys go out there at the 9.30 time slot. And they gave them all this fucking time to work with. Now, I was disappointed that we didn't get another match. I thought we were legit going to get four matches tonight. We only got two. We only got two. But the two that we got probably were two of the best matches in this entire thing so far. And at the end, I was not disappointed anymore. I'm glad that they let them go out there and do their fucking thing. There was one sequence in this match where Cedric Alexander did one of the most perfect brain busters I have ever seen for a near fall. Cody Ibushi kicks out at a two and three quarters. The crowd is fucking absolutely going crazy. He is 
legit frustrated at the fact that he cannot put Kota Ibushi away. Kota Ibushi gets up after the near pinfall attempt and he sits on his knees. Cedric Alexander, out of sheer frustration, kicks Kota Ibushi square in the face for another near fall, two and three quarters. Kota Ibushi gets out again. And I was legit fucking floored. My jaw hit the fucking floor at the fact that Kota Ibushi kicked out of everything that Cedric Alexander had thrown at him. I honestly thought, and I don't know the spoilers, I refuse to listen to the spoilers or read the spoilers. I don't want to know anything about this tournament. Anything. I legit thought going into this that Cedric Alexander, after what we've seen with those sequence of moves, was going to put Kota Ibushi away. Little did we know, Kota Ibushi got up after all those near fall attempts with a snap German suplex, a kick to the fucking face, and the best power bomb in the fucking business put Cedric Alexander away. I was absolutely fucking shocked as I sat on my couch. I legit got up and gave these two a standing ovation in front of my fucking television. The crowd was going crazy. Chance of fight forever was going on. And then that... That concluded tonight's show, round two. We only got two matches. Then they highlighted what's going to happen next week, and then we came back to in-ring action on the tournament. And Cedric Alexander was so floored about what happened. He was so disappointed that he probably wrestled the best match in his entire career that the crowd gave him a standing ovation saying, Thank you, Cedric. You see the emotion seeping from his face. And then at the end of the show, the crowd, everybody literally standing on their feet chanting, please sign Cedric. Out comes Triple H, grabs him by the neck, shakes his hand, raises his hand in front of everybody, and he's giving you a nod as if he is, yeah, this guy's going to be the fucking superstar of the Cruiserweight division. Speechless. Absolutely speechless about what we've seen tonight. The best match of this tournament, and it's it's like we're coming on here every single week and saying the same thing over and over and over again, but it is the legit truth. It is the truth. When you think you see something monumental and fucking great, WWE and everybody in this tournament has topped themselves tenfold. Unbelievable what we've seen tonight. All I'm saying is this. If you have the network, go out and watch it. Spare away 30 minutes and watch this match tonight. In fact, after I do what I got to do on YouTube tonight, I believe we're having out of nowhere with Joe Cronin. I'm actually going to go back and watch that match again. That's how fucking good it was. And if I go back and watch a match, you know I fucking enjoyed it. Floored. Absolutely fucking floored. This may very well end up being the best match of 2016 in all of wrestling, period. Especially the WWE. I've never seen anything like that in WWE in years. The closest thing to that was Nakamura and Zayn. That match was fucking so great just because of the atmosphere of NXT Dallas. What we've seen tonight, unfucking believable And I will say this about the Cruiserweight division. It will be a criminal fucking disgrace if the WWE does not treat the cruiserweight division exactly the way we've seen it presented tonight. Everything you've seen tonight in round two, to start round two of week number five, needs to be duplicated and replicated on Monday Night Raw. If not, they are doing the cruiserweight division a complete disrespect absolutely go out and watch it you will not and i swear on everything that i've ever said to you guys you will not be disappointed unfucking believable kota ibushi advances in the tournament obviously he is the favorite to win it obviously kota ibushi you don't know what's going on with him at all 
Uh, I believe he is signed. He's saying that he's not signed. He wants to go back to New Japan Pro Wrestling. He's got prior engagements and, and things that he wants to finish up doing there. You know, he wants to just be the king of the mountain over there. I don't know what's going on with him. In my honest opinion, he's going to win the whole fucking thing. There's no way after tonight he's going to lose. There, there's absolutely no, I cannot see him losing at all. He's going to be signed, no question, if not already. Cedric Alexander is going to be signed. Literally everybody in round two is going to be signed. And if that's the case, Monday Night Raw may very well have the absolute best fucking division in all of professional wrestling. Unfucking believable. And if they don't duplicate what they seen tonight on Monday Night Raw, it is going to be a huge disrespectful slap in the face to the cruiserweight division. I don't want to see anything else than what we've seen tonight on Monday Night Raw. And if that's the case, Monday Night Raw will be will be this much closer to being a legit fucking threat on Monday nights. They need to do exactly what they've seen tonight. I don't give a fuck what they need to do. Take these guys and let them loose. Like a fucking pack of wild wolves. Let them loose. Do not hold these guys back. You cannot. Otherwise, you're doing your company harm, you're doing the division harm, and you're doing everybody in this division individually harm. Gotta be done. Unfucking believable, man. I could sit here and talk about it all day. Go out and watch it. First round, uh, the first match of the second round, I should say. Gren Metalik versus Tajiri. Tajiri's 47, 47 years old is Tajiri. And he moves like he's fucking 27. Unfucking believable. Gren Metalik, listen, I know he was brought in because he is acquaintances and friends of Finn Balor. And Gren Metalik has proven you that not only was he a recommendation of Finn Balor, upon entry into this tournament, that he's proven to you that he belongs in this tournament. He is absolutely fucking great at what he does, man. I love his theme music, too. It's like a fucking... It's, I don't know. It's, it's got that Sepultura vibe, post-Max Cavalera, but with that Mexican flavor to it. But what they did tonight in the first round... in the first, I, I keep saying the first round. The second round of the first match was absolutely great, man. These guys went close to 10 minutes. Counter after counter, you know, you've seen all, the, all your signature moves from both men. In the end, Gren Metallic ended up winning with his Metallic Driver, which is uh, pretty much a, a scoop slam into a sit-down, almost pile driver type move. Unbelievable. And Gren Metallic advances to the second round, I believe. Excuse me. I believe he's going to fight the winner of uh, Akira Tos Tozawa's match. I don't know who he's fighting in the second round, but... This second round, literally everybody in the second round is going to get signed by the WWE. If not, WWE is uh, doing something wrong, man. Because this this is literally the best thing on television right now. Unfucking believable night of wrestling we've seen with just two matches in this Cruiserweight Classic. So that was pretty much it, man. Cody Ibushi beating Cedric Alexander tonight with a Golden Star power bomb, and we had. Grand Metallic beat Tajiri with the Metallic screwdriver at 10 minutes and 54 seconds. As far as NXT goes, man, NXT really didn't do uh, anything completely out of the ordinary. They continued to build towards NXT TakeOver back to Brooklyn. They opened the show with Bailey and Asuka and their contract signing. Pretty much, Bailey was very strict and very direct to Asuka about her title match, and she went over the fact that she won it in Brooklyn, she's going to win it back in Brooklyn, Asuka took away something that means the world to her, that was a part of her, Asuka, I really didn't distinguish what she was trying to say, I got the first couple of words out of her mouth that, you know, she was saying to Bailey, but after that, it was, it just went right over my fucking head, uh, Asuka really not uh, a good promo at all, but Asuka's more about facial expressions, and she's more about intensity, and she speaks with her actions in the ring. But this match is going to be fucking biblical, and obviously with Ember Moon debuting at NXT TakeOver Brooklyn, they're immediately going to thrust Ember Moon into the title hunt. I'm hearing from you guys on Twitter that Ember Moon and Asuka are having absolute fucking five-star matches at NXT house shows. I don't see Bayley beating Asuka at NXT TakeOver at all. Asuka is undefeated. She will remain undefeated. Ember Moon might very well be the woman to come in and slay Asuka and hand Asuka her first loss. I don't see it being Bailey. I think Bailey's going to be promoted to the main roster, and she's going to join Sasha, Charlotte, and Becky on, uh, on the main roster. I think Bailey's going to go to Monday Night Raw, being that there is rumors now of Bailey and 
Sasha Banks headed for a collision course at WrestleMania. But that was pretty much the way they opened the show. Contract signing. It is now official. Bailey versus Asuka for the NXT Championship, uh, NXT Women's Championship, excuse me, NXT Women's Championship at TakeOver back to Brooklyn. Authors of Pain versus Rob Risen and Adrian Nails. Uh, no question here about who won Authors of Pain. Clothesline, Russian leg sweep combination to Nails. One minute and 20 seconds. Post-match, TM61 comes out. Uh, they start to brawl for no reason whatsoever with the Authors of Pain. And they get fucking double power bombed, And they are taken out just as quick as uh, the two scrubs that they fought in the actual match. So I don't know, I don't know what that was about. Maybe they're, may maybe they're setting up a feud between those guys. Maybe it'll be a pre-show match for NXT to take over Brooklyn. I don't know, but the Authors of Pain continue to look impressive. We still don't know their backstory or their history from Paul Ellering. So hopefully, one of these weeks, we've been saying the same fucking thing for weeks now, uh, Paul Ellering's going to come out and explain to us who these guys are and what the fuck they're doing here. But uh, still, nothing from Paul Ellering about who the Authors of Pain are and why they are in NXT. Uh, Adrian Cien Almas, who has really, really fallen off the fucking map in NXT. He went against Angelo Dawkins tonight. Hammerlock DDT for the win for Andrade Cien Almas. It is now official. Bobby Roode met with William Regal before the show took place tonight. Mr. Glorious himself has got a match at NXT TakeOver back to Brooklyn. And he's fighting Andrade Cien Almas one-on-one. -on -one. Gonna be glorious. Gonna be great to see Bobby Roode on pay-per-view for NXT. It's going to be fucking great. No doubt in my mind that Bobby Roode will be victorious at NXT TakeOver Brooklyn. Definitely looking forward to seeing him and that epic theme music uh, in front of 15,000 people at the Barclays Center. Liv Morgan versus Billy Kay. Nothing too impressive here. Billy Kay beat Liv Morgan with a big boot. Uh, two women that they're trying to Pretty much advance in the women's division with all the departures that we've seen with Alexa Bliss and Nia Jax and soon to be Bailey. They need to get the women up to speed in, in the in the division down at NXT. Uh, Billy Kay seems to be coming along slowly but surely. Liv Morgan is impressive. She's like a little firecracker, but uh, she still has a long way to go. Billy Kay wins with a big boot. Austin Aries. Funny segment, funny segment with Austin Aries in the back with William Regal explaining the health, health benefits of eating oranges. And then William Regal co completely ignoring him. Austin Aries closes his laptop, which seems to be keeping William Regal occupied. And Austin Aries wonders why he doesn't have a match at NXT TakeOver back to Brooklyn. William Regal makes the match that I knew he was going to make. Eventually, they waited to the last minute. It will be No Way Jose versus Austin Aries at NXT TakeOver back to Brooklyn. Definitely looking forward to that match next Saturday. Going to be fucking awesome. Tommaso Ciampa and Johnny Gargano from last week. They highlight the Cruiserweight Classic. Unbelievable fucking match between those guys. William Regal gives Ciampa and Gargano a tag team title shot in Brooklyn. It will be the Revival. It is official. The Revival versus Ciampa and Gargano. I honestly think the way Ciampa and Gargano are coming up quickly in the tag team division, I would not be surprised if they win the tag team titles from the Revival at TakeOver Brooklyn. Ember Moon, another promo package for Ember Moon. She is coming. Uh, all we can see in the promo is her eyes. I've been watching a lot of her matches from her independent promotions and all her matches down in the indies, and I'm seeing some highlights of her at house shows that filmed that were filmed from fans via their cell phone. She might be my new favorite woman in all of WWE, man. Unfucking believable I can't wait to see what she's got at TakeOver Back to Brooklyn. Uh, Gargano and Ciampa, speaking of those two guys, they beat Tucker Knight and Patrick Clark, running knee, super kick combo, two night, three minutes and 13 seconds. Nothing special there. It was pretty much a warm-up match for the match at TakeOver against The Revival. Hideo Itami will be back next week after his impressive return. He beat uh, Sean, Mul uh, Sean Mulata uh, last week at uh, the TakeOver, not the TakeOver tapings, but the NXT tapings. Uh, Sean Maluda, Malada, Maluda, whatever the fuck his name is. Uh, Mojo Raleigh went one-on-one -on -one with Samoa Joe, non-title match. Mojo looked pretty decent here. Samoa Joe obviously ends up winning here. He makes Mojo Raleigh tap with the Coquina Clutch. Beautiful closing sequence of the show this week. Uh, we see Shinsuke Nakamura come out to his theme music. He starts fucking flailing his arms around, you know, being his charismatic self. 
and Samoa Joe releases the coquina clutch off of Mojo Rawley. A whole slew of officials and referees come down to hold Joe. Not Nakamura. They hold Joe back because they know that Joe has a fucking short fuse temper. And Nakamura has no referees or officials on him keeping him back. Meanwhile, all the referees and officials are holding Joe back. Nakamura gets in a cheap shot, slaps Joe across the face, and you see the fucking red in Samoa Joe's face just fucking, just illuminating Full Sail University. He is fucking pissed. Even while he had the coquina clutch on, he was screaming, Nakamura, Nakamura, this is going to be you. So Nakamura comes down, slaps him across the face, and Nakamura... As the show goes off the air, starts teasing Samoa Joe, and he knows Samoa Joe cannot get to him due to the referees and the officials holding him back, man. Nice closing sequence. Going to be very interesting to see what they do in the final week of build towards their big match. It, it really felt like a big money match with the, with the environment tonight between Nakamura and Samoa Joe. They got one week left of build. Going to be very interesting to see what they got planned. I have not read the spoilers. I don't like reading the spoilers for NXT, so... It is what it is, man. I got one week left till TakeOver Brooklyn. Or one show left, I should say. Till TakeOver back to Brooklyn. Very, very, very enjoyable night of wrestling tonight, guys. If you missed it, I highly suggest you go and watch, especially the Cruiserweight Classic. Ibushi and Cedric Alexander. Unfucking believable tonight. Going to be talking about this for the entire remainder of this tournament until the Cruiserweight Classic ends and we see these guys on Monday Night Raw, man. Unfucking believable display of, of athleticism and just. All out fucking war for the Cruiserweight Classic, man. Just because of what these guys showcase tonight, the Cruiserweight Classic is right now the best thing on television when it comes to professional wrestling, man. Unfucking believable. Thank you guys so much for listening and watching me tonight. If you guys enjoyed it, please hit that thumbs up. Let me know what you thought about the match down below between Ibushi and Cedric Alexander. Unbelievable, man. I can't wait till week number six of the Cruiserweight Classic. Until then, guys, I'm JD. Hit that thumbs up. I also posted a video of my King of the Ring first round match between Dean Ambrose and Sami Zayn. Epic fucking finale of that match. Make sure you guys go check that out. I'll leave you a link in the description as well as an annotation on the screen. And I'll be back with Off the Script episode 130 on Friday. Until then, I'm JD. And I'll see you guys later on Friday.